Good morning, everyone. Wow, thank you so much. Thank you. So my talk today is titled, How to Say, Let's Stay Young. And I realize that's a very, um, kind of egotistical um, thought, let's stay young. But um, then I thought, well, let's stay spiritually young. That can carry us a much many more years. <laughs> so I um, want to read just a couple, um, um, a couple of short paragraphs from this book, Spiritual Growth, as, I, as, as we begin here. Your higher self is a dynamic, growing life force consciousness. It exists in a realm where all beings are united as one multidimensional consciousness. Your everyday consciousness is an aspect of your higher self that lives in your physical reality. Your higher self sends you impulses to be loving and united with others. Your higher self knows harmony, order, and light. When you add these to your life, you are operating as your higher self. Your higher self knows why you have challenges that you have. Your higher self is the very essence of who you are and holds the accumulated knowledge from all your lifetimes. So remember, we have, we have help from other lifetimes. <laughs> Considering all the troubles I have, um, I'm very thankful. <laughs> and I, I, I think the reason why I'm giving this talk is so I can remember a little bit more how to draw on those parts of myself that are unexpressed or unthought of or unfelt. Your higher self is the very essence of who you are and holds the accumulated knowledge from all your lifetimes. It is the wise teacher that exists within you. And, and I'm looking around, where's my teacher? Where's my teacher? <laughs> anyway, I'll stop. I'll, I'll go um, into my talk now. Um, the, the idea of staying young, of course, appeals to all of us. And um, I, I think, especially me, in my egotistical attitude, I turned 78 two weeks ago, and it's just Impossible. impossible. <laughs> Um, but what I'm really thankful for is that my consciousness does not know age. It knows no age whatsoever. My body, unfortunately, <laughs> is, seems to quite, be quite the opposite. So the reason to spend some time thinking about our higher selves is to get my body to more to get me to cooperate more with my body <laughs> and, and lift it up and into places it's never been before. But that idea of, um, of there being no aging in our consciousness is, is, um, is very important, at, le at least to me. Um, because I think sometimes when we, when we feel old, if we're feeling old, um, we might actually be feeling sick or tired or even depressed. And um, those kinds of feelings are very um, easy to access for me. And um, it's harder to access the remembering who, who I am because it starts out with attitude. Attitude is everything. Um, so our striving to be happy is, um, is incredibly important to know what, what, it, what is happiness for me. And I, I believe the um, parts of ourselves that we need to access are that, that deep, 
peacefulness within us that is takes a long time to find and access and um, and we often don't even even relate to that because we're obsessed with who we are and what we're doing and what we're doing next I've, I've done this now and next what's the next thing in my in my <laughs> human process, my ego process. What's the next thing? Um, we barely get through one thing when we're on to the next thing. And for, for me, that's easy to measure because um, I live quite far out of town and so I, I um, <laughs> get in my car, go someplace then get in my car again and go someplace else, then get in my car again and go someplace else. <laughs> and, and I believe that we, we should be doing more meditation in our cars. <laughs> in fact, maybe, maybe we ought to do it. <laughs> have, have some lessons on. <laughs> I just thought of that. That's not part of my talk. Um, <laughs> it is not. Well, it brings me to one of my points is that um, we need to laugh. We need to find ways to laugh that we've, that we've never thought of before. Um, so first we remember that we are our higher selves and we um, it's easy to access that part, but we have to remember it. We have to remember that. So remembering that we are infinite, uh, um, remembering that we're the infinite beings that we've always wanted to be. Um, and there, there just seems to be so much separation between this this body that I'm hauling around, <laughs> that my infinite self is hauling around, <laughs> and and um, I I I manage to think of how how difficult it is, um, but it's not, it's not. It's our delight, it's our it's in our laughter, to. Um, to find the joy that is everywhere and, and all the time is with us. And, and that's part of our higher self. So don't stop learning. I'm, I'm going to give you just, in no special order really, um, some, some ideas you might not have thought of. Don't stop learning. Of course we thought of that. But staying curious is... Um, is important to me. Um, what is that? Why is that? Who is that? <laughs> um, and, and building on the story, the stories we have within us, the experiences of a, of a long lifetime, those stories we have within us, we need, we need to share them. And we also need to remember that we are not our stories. Our stories are here to um, show us the way, but it, it's not the way. It's just, it's just an indication. And it's, um, it's, it's something to bring us joy, to help us um, create and, and recreate. Um, the life that we really want. Um, stay curious. Um, <laughs> these days, you know, I'm curious about something. I look it up on Google. Natural ways to avoid, not, not avoid, to deal with diarrhea, things. <laughs> I mean, you know, anything and everything is, is, is possible. Challenging ourselves, um, and certainly this is one of my most profound challenges, is to get up here and actually communicate, um, communicate my story, communicate the story of my life, communicate that 
I, I don't feel any more qualified than anyone else here to, um, to, do, to do what I'm doing. But because I'm curious, I really do enjoy the preparation um, that, it, that it takes. I mean, um, so what I do is I set myself an idea and then I listen for, um, for the ideas to come to me from my higher self. Um, and, and they do, they, they come flooding as you will find out as I go along. <laughs> <laughs> so um, challenging, challenging myself is, you know, it's, it's not easy. It's not easy, but it's, it's possible. You know, there's a difference between easy and possible. Almost anything is possible, but, but, but sometimes it's, it's too hard. Running for president would be really too hard for me. <laughs> But it's possible. <laughs> so, um, um, when I one time I was um, going on a hike with a friend, and we were we were um, headed out of Santa Fe to the mountains, and it's a, a seventeen mile drive, but it's it's up, and um, this was a ten thousand foot peak right outside Santa Fe, and but you drive up to 7,500 feet, so you're left with uh, 2,500 feet or so. And so I was reading, um, I was reading um, Hugh Prather's book, Notes to Myself, which was his first book. He wrote many others. He was a student and um, teacher of, of A Course in Miracles. And um, I was reading this book, and we, um, it's an all-day trip. It's up and back. It's shorter on the back, on the down, but um, it's still a very long hike. And we, we got where, as far as we were going, not quite to the peak. And I was reading, I was reading the book. I was reading out of the book to to my friend. And I think after that we climbed even higher, and then um, and then we came down. I was. This was eight hours into the day, and I was skipping, and I was happy, and I was with that, with whatever there was in the book, whatever words there were in the book, just left me happy and lighter. And even though I've been hiking for eight hours, <laughs> it was just such an incredible experience. And so I urge you to challenge yourself and find find those ways that you can, um, you, can, you can let go of what you think ought to be true. So letting go is another point that I, um, I think is very important. Letting go of what's, of what's bothering you will help you deal with whatever the, the, the um, consequences require of you. My lawnmower burned up <laughs> some weeks ago, and my lawn is about that tall now, and I'm going, and I called my neighbor and said, you can come and mow my lawn now. <laughs> I'll pay you the $40 you charge. And, and she said, well, maybe it's too long now. I have company. <laughs> so here I am, I, thinking that I have to I have to figure it out, but it's not my, I need to hand it over to my higher self and realize that this, this will get done. It'll eventually get done. It's not going to be as easy as it might have been if I had really tried harder two weeks ago or three weeks ago. <laughs> um, so there's a, there's a quote from A Course in Miracles. I'm not a victim of the world I see. And, and that's very important in this case of the, of the fire and the lawnmower. But next I want to talk about, a little bit about finding peace. Even in our peace prayers that we do, we are 
we seem to be talking about peace that's outside ourselves. We seem to be talking about looking for peace in the world. And I, and I don't say that's a, a bad thing at all, but we're not gonna find it there. And it's time for us to let go of the, the emotional investment we have in, in, um, in finding peace in the world. There, um, there will be, there won't even be peace in ourselves. <laughs> Although peace is, finding peace, the only place to find it is in ourselves. And finding it and sharing it as best we know how, as best we can possibly experience is very important. And um, it, it does work. It does work. The wisest among us will say that we attract events into our lives that we will, will take us to our best spiritual expression and our highest spiritual growth. <laughs> so, I'm just glad I'm to a place where I can think most, most things from the past are pretty funny by now. Um, I was at Walmart. This was my second or third trip to Walmart to find my um, Parkinson's medication. It stops me from shaking. And um, I had to, the, the day before, or a few days before, I had talked, you know, the, yeah, the day before the holiday, I had talked to my doctor's office and they said, oh yes, we sent that order off a week ago. They, they had not, because I had looked for it a week ago. And, and at Walmart, and then, and then I went yesterday, or the day before, one of these days, I, I went, they still hadn't, didn't have it. They still hadn't, and I, oh, I was there at the window at the pharmacy at Walmart. I, I, I real I lost it. I just lost it. And I wasn't yelling, but I was very, very angry. Um, and I said, they said it was here. And, and you, you said, you said it was here. <laughs> I was talking to my doctor's office at that point. I have, it's a good thing we have these cell phones because it makes it so easy to, to attack somebody when you, when you really need, when you really need to. I said, why did you lie to me and tell me? I can't believe I would say that to a person, but I did. Anyway, um, it, it all got resolved in about 10 minutes or so, but I was just, I lost it. <laughs> so we have to forgive ourselves. Forgive yourself, that's what, I didn't write that down, but it, it is a very important part of staying, of staying young and, and, and um, and, and trying to remember who we are. So there's a couple of other things that I think are important. I'll finish though um, soon. Taking responsibility for everything. I chose each event or person or difficulty. <laughs> so eight years ago, I figured I helped to elect. Um, what's his face? Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Trump, I did, I did not forget his name. Even it was, it was a different way to view that event, and I mentioned those, used those words to my sister, and older sister, the psychologist who said, oh no, 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 I didn't have anything to do with that. But when we take responsibility for everything, we have an opportunity to remember that we are one with everyone. And that what we do, what we say, what we feel affects 
everything around us. It's called the butterfly effect, which I talked about a few months ago. Um, everything we do say, think, affects everything else, affects other people. And um, I think that um, contemplating the idea of being responsible for everything um, allows us to think of ourselves in more of an expansive consciousness. And I, I, think, I think that's really important. And it's, it's not that I'm the cause for all the problems in the world. But I am part of the world, so I'm part of everybody's problems, as well as my own, at a level, at a spirit, at a level, at a level I am. So I suggest, another thing I suggest is facing our fears. Robert Kennedy Jr. says, do the thing that scares you the most. And Louise Hay tells us, sometimes when you are most afraid, what you are most afraid of is the thing that will set you free. So many years ago, Larry and I and Alex were, um, were getting set to go snowshoeing in, in the mountains above Santa Fe. And I was feeling upset to my stomach. I didn't realize I was frightened. Uh, that came later. <laughs> um, so I, 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 I just, it, it didn't get better, but I, I went anyway, I went anyway. And um, I realized as I, as we were, um, as we were snowshoeing that I was, I was frightened, that I had gotten sick because I was frightened. And in this case, definitely, it was a good idea that I actually um, followed, followed my intention of going snowshoeing and, and, and experienced the fear because it, it showed me something about myself that I hadn't been aware of before. And so that's why I suggest we face our fears. And further, and, and I have more, I have a greater, um, a bigger list. I don't, I got to finish soon though. Facing our pain, being grateful for everything all the time. Facing our pain, being, breathing into our pain allows it to change. It's, um, I remember surrendering to um, my um, cancer treatment. Um, it, it gave me, it, it gave me the power. It gave me my, my, um, victimless person back. It gave me the victimless person back to me. I was, I was, I was in charge of what was going on. I, w I was powerful. Um, so instead of giving away, instead of giving way or pretending that I was more powerful than I actually was. I, I went inside to find the strength because that's where our strength is. It's not really here. It's not really here. But, re, but most important, I think, is remembering who you really are. And, um, I probably forget that more than anything else. So we need to treasure the experiences of spiritual awareness that come to us in our bodies and in our minds and, in our, and through our hearts. Um, we need to look for the opportunities and not the problems. And I'll just read the, these few words from um, Esther, Esther Hicks and Abraham. It feels so good to realize that the energy that creates worlds is supporting you. 
to wake up every morning in clarity, knowing exactly who you are, to know that Source God is thinking through you to experience meaningful rendezvous, to dove dovetail with the right people who give you the right piece of information just at the right time, to never feel dependent upon anyone, to know with clarity who you are, to feel the energy that creates worlds moving through your fingertips and through your mind to see evidence all around you of the thoughts you have been thinking and to feel the power of who you are. That's what you came for. And so it is.